Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's meta build, we'll be covering a long and forgotten Void Hunter loadout that is still as powerful after many years, and that is the Deadfall Tether Orpheus Rig build. One of the most easiest and attainable builds that any player can use if doing general team based activities or end game content. I'm going to show you a setup that can provide near unlimited super energy and make it very powerful when doing GMs or any endgame content you have in mind that have a high enemy density to them. Although weapons shown are going to be aimed for endgame completion, recommendation will be applied where most appropriate, and don't worry if you don't have some weapons shown. Forget everything about Movius Quiver, and start praying to your new master, which is the Deadfall instead. To start you're going to want to have Vanishing Step, where dodging makes you invisible. Then you want Trapper's Ambush, where activating Quickfall will allow you to turn yourself and allies invisible. As the build will play both a solo DPS and team supporter, it makes sense to focus on the one key area that the hunters specialize in. Going invis is very powerful with how easy it is to pull off, and using this on teammates as well can help make huge recoveries if certain encounters end badly. Please note that if you do go with what I have, you will need to invest in both mobility and strength at a relatively high level. The fragments used are Echo Obscurity, where doing the finish on a target makes you invisible. Echo Venance, where your lingering good duration are extended. Echo Persistent, where void buffs apply to you last longer. And Echo of Undermining, where your grenades apply a 15% debuff. The Echo Obscurity, Remnants and Persistent is going to be a must have when focusing on the Hunter Invis. The last fragment slot leaves you with whatever you have in mind, and 90% of the time, players aim for undermining for that big damage debuff. This loan makes the build very simple to put together and use from there onwards. However, if you want to expand further, then you've got a number of ways around this. Echo of Instability is great when paired with your selected void weapon, as the volatile threat can spread to other targets once Terror is active. On the other hand, Echo of Reprisal grants super energy when surrounded, and this leans heavily into the nature of our build. For the mods and stat section, having a high mobility, strength and discipline will play a big part within the build and its success. Intellect is also important and will be invested in via the given mods. Mobility at tier 6 and strength at tier 4 is a generally good spot to aim for when running two options to go in Viz. While dodging will have a 0.29 second cooldown for class ability being used, a link in this in with strength will further support the two both in the hand. The Trapper's Ambush will allow us to play more risky if we need to do a certain action, such as save a teammate in the middle of a fight, or grab some heavy ammo, or deal with the objective on hand. Now, having the front of Viger mod will push its cooldown rate to 1 minute 7 seconds at tier 7, and with the Momentum Transfer and Outreach mod, this alone will make a huge difference when it's needed most. A discipline at tier 7 is also another good spot to aim for, as with the front of focus available, this will push it to tier 10 and a cooldown rate of a minute 16 under the vortex grenade use. Although this may sound relatively high at first, the following is not actually that bad when you also link in Orpheus Rig's usage of giving users class ability energy, super, and ability energy usage backed up on the user over time. With the right setup like shown, this worked out fairly well as you won't be left on dry for a long time. And then lastly, Intellect at tier 6 with Deadform will give us a 6 minute 31 second cooldown rate, which once you apply Orpheus Rig and other super energy generated mods, you should come down to around a 5 minute super cooldown rate instead, depending on scenario. This would then leave you room for additional add-ons such as Charged Up giving us a plus 1 to armor charges held. Then, having the Void Siphon will allow us to create orbs of power while on the go. A times one Void Weapon Surge mod for a constant 7% weapon damage buff will also come in handy with taking down certain tough enemies and bosses faster. Time Dilation mod will extend the duration of all time based mods we have to around 15 seconds extra time, and the Ammo Finder mods for a heavy are key for making your heavy last longer, especially when you have the reserves and scavenger mods available. Now lastly, the weapons being used will be Monarch Azotic Bow. One of the greatest Azotic Bows in game that has a great usage in both PvP and PvE environments. The following fits perfectly into the design of the build, where applying Tether and using Monarch's Poison effect to spread its damage at a much faster rate. At first, I was going to use Wish Gender since that's a popular weapon that's supposed to fame in endgame content, but after testing, 
The weapon felt more designed for a DPS focused build, which does fit the bill. The weapon also incentively applies overload rounds to targets, which makes it very handy for covering all our bases and GMs. Generally, any weapon that can spread a elemental effect will pair well with the build, but Monarch with its poison effect is going to be the best option to pick from here on out. For Heavy, I have the Breacher Osprey Adept with Fill Prep and Frenzy. Although a lot of people have been saying that the following weapon isn't that great this season, as there are other rocket launchers that are outright better in general, the following does come with some interesting perks and stats that are worth the investment. My version has a 100 blast radius which seems insane at first, but works out really well in high density environments with fill prep and a number of heavy mods designed for increasing my heavy reserves further with the following actually working out pretty damn well. If you like something similar to this or something very easy to get, then the Red Herring Rocket Launcher from Witch Queen is going to be the second best option to own. When using Orpheus Rigs in the endgame, players are given two options with how they want to play. Option 1 is to use Deadfall for spamming supers and having a longer super duration which will add up once it's over. Option 2 is to use Mobius Quiver with Orpheus so you can get 3 shots instead of 1. Option 2 tends to be the most common method for a lot of players to aim for as that extra bit of DPS on top of the debuffs applied can make a notable dent against enemies. It's especially more common to see this with Star Eaters and its damage scaling applied, though using the following will reduce your super shots down to 2 only. Deadfall with Orpheus on the other hand tends to be overlooked by players when honestly it shouldn't be. The following combo is great for a lot of content requiring taking on a large group of enemies or bosses all at once, as the tether mechanic for Deadfall allows us to tag multiple entities. The uniqueness of the combo allows us to show how fast you can get your super and use it again in a short period of time without the need of fully investing into the intellect mod. Not only is its cooldown quite short, but its duration of 12 seconds is enough for the user to get half or a full super back as long as you're tagging multiple entities at once. Pair this up with Ashes of Assets, a weapon that can spread its damage effect to mobile targets such as Le Monarch, and a rocket launcher with your choice, and you get a fast but easy to main hunter build that can be used anywhere you like. But quite honestly, Deadfall is quite effective with shutting down a lot of things, and with how Bungie have increased the enemy density even more in content, I can see this being hugely popular down the line with more new content to come with team based activities. The only noticeable issue with using Deadfall is how easy it is for most bosses to easily walk out of its range. Although some bosses will feel the full effect of the super in action along with the weapon damage and such, the more aggressive bosses will not fall into this same camp at times. This can be quite dangerous if used in GM Lightblade for example, as the main boss has a habit of not only getting more aggressive in later stages, but also has a habit of being more tougher to tackle while on the go. As simple as it comes, the build is everything that an endgame player, specifically solo or team, will want for great survival built into it. Whatever the next raid or dungeon that will be coming out, you'll be very thankful to use this with how well it excels in. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts and content to share then please leave a comment below, at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.